Hello and welcome to the House of Wisdom Knife Review. Today's knife review is going to be over one of my favorite designers, Tashi Barusha. It's manufactured by Riot Knives and is the Riot Starboy. Riot is a high quality Chinese maker owned by David Dang. Tashi Barusha has designed two EDC size knives recently that are coming out with Riot. The Starboy has a three and a quarter inch blade, that's what the review today is going to be over. And they also are coming out in early 2018 with the Baby Machine, which has a 3.15 inch blade. The lightest knife made by Riot is the Wave, which comes in at 3.76 ounces. The Starboy is one of the lightest Barusha knives made, and it comes in at 4.19 ounce, but it isn't the lightest Riot knife, nor is it the lightest Barusha design. The lightest Barusha design I'm aware of is made by Andre Thorburn and Andre von Heerden, the A2 combo, coming in at 2.4 ounces. Now I'm going to show you a couple of knives by different designers, both of which are manufactured by Riot Knives. This is the Leon Ma, Leon Ma Lanny, produced by Riot Knives. And this is the Riot Starboy, which is designed by Tashi Barusha. And they have the same thing in common. They're custom designers who have their knives manufactured by Riot Knives. In this case, uh, Riot's name isn't even on the blade. It's a Liang Ma knife manufactured by Riot Knives. In this case, Riot Knives is on the blade. It's a Riot Starboy designed by Tashi Barusha. And I really don't understand the difference. I think it has something to do with financing and marketing. Well, the Riot Starboy is a a takeoff on the future, which is a larger integral knife with a three and three quarters inch blade. This knife has a smaller blade by half an inch at three and a quarter inch blade. I'll put up a picture of the future so you can see it. The specifications of the Starboy, it has a blade, as I've mentioned, of three and a quarter inches. The handle length on the Starboy is four and a quarter inches giving a total knife length of 7.5 inches. The weight of the knife is 4.19 ounces. The blade is available in a grinder satin, which has vertical lines, a hand rub satin, which this is an example of, with horizontal lines, a black coated blade, and a damask steel blade. The blade on this one is RWL34, which is chemically similar to the Crucible CPM154 in a clip point configuration. It starts out a high flat ground, and then as it transitions in the clip point, it comes a full flat ground. The grind comes all the way to the top of the blade. The blade stops are integrated into the blade. I'll show you them here. You can see the blade stops there. They're a part of the blade. And there is a channel cut out on the inside of the titanium handle that functions as a blade stop. And there are many knives that have this similar configuration. I'm going to give you a few. Here is the Medford. 187, as you can see, it has integrated blade stops on the blade, and then the titanium handle and G10 in this instance are the blade stops. There is the Leon Ma Warrior 1, which has the blade stops integrated onto the blade with channels, and the channels are exposed. Not all blades have those exposed, but these two do. And the third example of a similar design is the Hinder Half Track. It has the uh, stops integrated onto the blade and then a channel that functions as a stop that inside of the titanium handle functions as the blade stop. And that's a similar uh, blade stop mechanism that this knife has. The method of deployment on the knife is by flipper and I want to brag on this flipper. It is great. In the open position the knife handle is continuous with the flipper design so it's one clean smooth line and also in the closed position, it's one clean smooth line. And Tashi Barusha has done this. I want to show you the similarities. This is the Rowdy that's a Tashi Barusha design. Again, the flipper type is continuous with a handle in the closed and the open position. And you can see the similarities in the blade design both in the closed and the open configuration. 
Not all knives do it that well. I want to give you an example not to pick on any knife, but here is the Brass laser Razorback. And as you can tell, the handle goes straight and then the flipper tab hangs down like a misplaced appendage. Not to pick on anybody, but I think the beauty of the Tashi Barusha design, how it integrates the flipper into the handle design, is much prettier and more functional. And it feels better. If your hand goes against that, it's an abrupt uh, stop. And here there's a nice smooth contouring so your, your finger never feels like it's abutting against anything that's out of place. The handle is a full titanium handle both on the uh, show side and the clip side. I just want to bring some attention to the beauty of the handle. Uh, J.D. Perkins uh, at J.D. Cutlery does this and he does it for a nominal price it's only twenty dollars more than a blade you would pick up at blade hq for example this is a teal green with bronze uh, stone wash to it and he even bronzed the hardware and pivot for me which wasn't done initially i bought it as an afterthought i sent him an email and asked him if he would mind bronzing those and he did that free of cost for me so i really appreciate jeff perkins for doing that so you can get a customized knife if you get it through jd cutley for a nominal price well, I just want to talk about now the beauty of the show side. First of all, the only there is no signage on anywhere on the, the handle scales. The only thing we have on the show side is the pivot. We have this sweeping line that goes from wide and deep to shallow and narrow, uh, about two-thirds of the way up the knife. The similar aesthetic theme is continued on the clip side, starting on the clip, and then continuing on to the handle frame, even though it's done in two different planes. So I want to shout out to Tashi Barusa. I love that continuing aesthetic theme, and I think it really adds a lot to the knife. So anyway, uh, it's held together by two body screws, and it has a faux integral design. As you remember, the predecessor of this knife, the Future, had an actual uh, integral design, but this just has a faux integral design, and you can see the line here that separates the two handle scales. They're held together by two body screws and the pivot, and then the lanyard hold I want to bring attention to, it is in sagittal plane rather than transverse plane. Most knives put their uh, lanyard in transverse plane like this. It goes across like that, and so you have the lanyard cord sticking out like this at right angles to the knife. If you put it in the sagittal plane, it's sticks out in the same plane of the knife and doesn't come out wide. I think it's a better design. I just want to bring up other knife makers have did this, done this. This is the Reich 1508, and here is the lanyard hold also. They put it at the end of the knife, and they put it in sagittal plane also like the uh, Riot Starboy. So I just want to shout out. And look, it doesn't interrupt the knife. Some people will put their lanyard holes as an afterthought on it, and I'll look at the at the Riot uh, Wave, for example, it's just kind of stuck onto the edge there, whereas here it doesn't interrupt the lines of the knife, so I really like the design features that they have there. Okay, um, so the tail of the knife I wanted to bring attention to. There's an interesting design here. It looks like a crowbar on the tail of the knife. I really don't understand why that is. It seems like you could just make it across there. The only functional advantage it has is you can really see that your knife is perfectly centered because it sticks up through the end of the knife there. But uh, anyway, I just thought that that was a little bit odd. We'll move along now to the pivot. The pivot is a ceramic pivot that uses Torx hardware, and my hardware is bronzed here. The lock bar has a steel insert, which you can see here, and then it has an over-travel stop. And you can see the over-travel stop right there also. The uh, lockup on this particular knife is about at 30 to 25 percent. The pocket clip on the knife is very nice also. It is a sculpted titanium pockel knife that has the line going across as I mentioned before. It has blind screws so that the clip side is relatively unobstructive. All your hardware is on the inside and it has a nice ramp to get into your jeans pocket. The action of the knife is very smooth. It has a great detent. Uh, the flipper design is made more to be a light switch type flipper than a push button flipper. If you try to push button, it really doesn't work. It's made to be a light switch. Um, but uh, the action is very smooth and it flips hard 
Whenever you shake it down after you get past the detent angle, it shakes down very nicely. The centering is perfect, as Riot always does. The signage on the knife is minimal. The handle has no signage whatsoever. It's completely sterile. On the blade on the show side, it has the Riot maker's mark. And then on the clip side, it has the steel type, which is RWL34, and then it has the Tashi Barusha's maker mark. I just want to point out, I like the smaller Tashi Baruka's maker mark on the Starboy than the larger one on the Rowdy. I think it fits more, and it doesn't detract from that beautiful hand rub satin finish we have on the blade. The value of the knife is really good. Uh, in this version, the, the hand drum satin is 355 from JD Cutlery. It's 340 for a grinder satin. Uh, it's twenty dollars cheaper if you go on HQ uh, Blade HQ's pre-order, but they don't have them yet as of early December. So, what are my impressions of the Riot Starboy? I really like it. Are there opportunities for impro- improvement? Well, either I have a, a theoretic one. Uh, Jeff Perkins, whenever he was disassembling it, said, do not try to disassemble this knife. As a matter of fact, he had to send two back to Riot because he messed them up trying to disassemble them and reassemble them to anodize them. So I try to use good judgment. I can use my prefrontal cortex enough to know that if Jeff Perkins says not to do it, I'm not going to do it because he disassembles hundreds of these knives and and uh, you can learn from the judgment of other people. The same thing with Nick Shabazz. He one time disassembled an SR2 from Lion Steel, and he said, do not ever try to do it. And so I don't try to do it. I use good judgment. What do I like about the knife, though? Tashi Baruka design in an EDC format. I really like it. Tashi on his customs uses really big blades. There'll be a four-inch blade on some of his knives, like the the Perv and the Church, they have really large blades. And so to make an EDC size knife, I really value that. Their normal knives are designed more to be placed into a, a case for show and storage rather than into a pocket for EDC use. So I like an EDC use knife. I like the lanyard hole orientation too with the sagittally placed rather than transversely placed lanyard. It keeps the handle scale design clean and uncluttered. And I like the consistent aesthetic theme that Tashi Barusha uses, the line that goes from deep and wide to small and thin across the handle scale. And even on the clip side, it does the same thing, even though it has to do so in two different planes on the clip and then continuing on the handle scale. Well done, Tashi Barusha. And I like that Jeff Perkins sells it, and he'll customize it for you for only a minimal fee, around $20, so that's an advantage also. Summary. Tashi Barusha is a great designer. Riot Knives is a great manufacturer. Together, they've teamed up to make a great EDC-sized titanium frame lock knife, and J.D. Cutler will customize it in any way you want for very little money. This knife might be the right one for you. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next House of Wisdom knife video.